Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Well, it's been said before that one of the most important things to move your life along is to be resilient. Something happens, you got it. You can move forward as opposed to having worry and fear and stress and anxiety, no faith in yourself. What about emotional resilience? Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Being able to put the force field up, if you will, when emotional situations come up so that you can move past them, or are you just hiding from them? We're going to look at that today with somebody who's got some really interesting insight. She's actually uh, she's actually very excited to uh, dig into this with a new modality that she experienced today, and she helps people with their visible potential as a trauma-informed coach. Lori Kroger is back with us. Hey, Lori, how you doing? I am fantastic. Loving life. How about you? Real good. Real good. And the, the resilience thing, that was a game changer for me when I figured that out in my journey. But when we talk about emotional resilience, it does make me wonder, you know, is it a product of somebody just being strong emotionally or somebody putting it into what I call, and I got one right here, the emotional file cabinet? <laughs> You know, it's it's really interesting when you think about it, you know, emotional resilience isn't just about the ability to bounce back. It's the ability to really learn from what you're going through and utilize that to help yourself move forward. And when we have emotional intelligence, that's great. You know, emotional intelligence is really, really important. We need to understand what we're feeling, what these emotions are. You know, but when we talk about the emotional resilience, that's the ability to be able to feel those emotions and still be able to move forward. And this Mm -hmm. morning I had the most powerful experience. Um, I did an event called Neuro Emotional Technique. (laughs) And it was something that I had discovered when we went to the gala for the Phoenix Project. What I realized is that, yes, I am very, very strong. I am not one to cry easily, but I had a lot of stuck emotions. You know, you put them aside and like, okay, I'll deal with this later, the emotional intelligence. But then what if you don't actually deal with them? Hmm. Just move on. They're sitting inside your body and they're creating stress. They're creating that physical, those physical ailments that we feel on a regular basis. And it was amazing when I left, I've had this nasty crimp in my neck for probably about the last month or two and it was gone. Wow. It was gone. (laughs) I'm like, hey, I can move again. (laughs) Interesting. But I was able to cry on things that I didn't even realize existed. And when we cry, we release cortisol. So for all of you people out there who are always telling people, it's okay, don't cry, please let them cry Hmm. because it does release the stress hormone cortisol. And I just felt a light, airy release that was amazing. Wow. Wow. You got to let it all out. And many of us don't. We keep it bottled up inside. And they they even say there's chemicals in your tears that Mm -hmm. are beneficial. They are. So yeah. how, do you, how do you do it? Like, okay, the cry, we got that. Releasing that emotion, sometimes it's called stuck emotion. There are energy healers out there that Reiki, and I've gone through a lot of those modalities um, to release that emotion. Uh, is that something that, that's on your radar as well? It really is. Um, you know, when, when we think about releasing emotion, we think about what's going to happen if I get angry for me, anger is one of the hardest emotions for me to release. Mm. Um, I've seen the damage that anger can do. And so I would cry and I've learned, I actually learned a lot this morning and having that ability to express anger and frustration in a healthy way, because what it does is it generates action. We generate action when we're angry. There is something there that is either compromising a moral or a value. You know, when we're sad, it is heartbreaking. You know, we that means we're attached to something. And by acknowledging it and really focusing on letting ourselves feel those feelings, 
we're able to create that emotional resilience and move forward. We can think more logically behind that to see the lesson that was there for us to learn. Mm. And everything that we experience, you believe there's a lesson there. I do. I do believe that there's, there's a learning experience in every joy, every heartache, you know, there's, it, there's something that we can take from it that we can then utilize to help other people. I don't want to accept it, <laughs> but I know it's true. <laughs> it is hard to accept sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, why do I have to go through that? So I can learn a lesson. Why couldn't you, yeah, I picked up a book or something. Why do I have to, but that's, that's, they, they, that's this thing but called life. When, when you think about it, you took yourself there. Traces and actions led you to wherever it was you were. Mm-hmm. So there's a lesson in that choice or that decision. <laughs> well, maybe that wasn't the best choice or maybe that was an amazing choice. Right. Yeah. You know, and we won't ever know until we're there. And that's where a lot of anxiety comes in because people want the answers of the future in the now. <laughs> well, it's best to take care of that now. It's not going to happen. You know, somebody that can tell us what's going to happen in five seconds with certainty. Complete certainty, five <laughs> seconds, five minutes, five days, five months, five weeks, five years, whatever it is. You know, let them, let me know who it is. Cause I'm, I'm still, I haven't found them yet. I haven't either. <laughs> yeah. It, it's just not even worth worrying about, but easier said than done. It takes time. It takes life to, you know, to, to, to really learn that it doesn't support you um, to worry about the future. So when we're talking about these, these stuck or trapped emotions, What are some of the other ways that we can release? Um, Meditation, mindfulness, Mm -hmm. going for a walk in nature. Um, One of my mentors back in the day, I was really, really, really having a rough day. And I was having trouble expressing that emotion of anger. She took me outside to a park. We picked up a stick and she let me hit a tree (laughs) just so that I could get out that pent up energy. And believe it or not, just hitting a tree made me feel a little bit better. Now, I don't recommend hitting things on a regular basis, um, you know, but sometimes that energy is so pent up and so built that running, boxing, exercising, doing something to release that excess energy will help you with that emotional resilience. And is it true that it can come from anywhere? For example, if it is uh, anger. Uh, Did we ever talk about this? What is anger? Not specifically. Okay. I believe anger is the one emotion that comes from something else. It's not just anger. Mm -hmm. It comes from either sadness, frustration. There's something else. Sadness is sadness. Happiness is happiness. Anger is something else fueling it. Think about it. What are your thoughts? I don't have the answers, but I thought about it. And that's, that's what I come up with, that it's something else there. Yeah, I don't, I just, I do not disagree with that at all. And the reason behind that is, like I said, when we are angry, it's because we have a value that has been compromised. There is a moral dilemma, something that we just believe is flat out wrong and it makes us mad, you know, and sometimes that anger is the sadness, you Mm -hmm. know, when we look at our world and people get angry right now. It's an extreme sadness that is driving that anger. You know, when we look at our losing the loss, the loss of a loved one, losing somebody that we love, whether it's in a relationship, whether it's through God forbid death, there's the anger, but it's that extreme sadness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, we have the frustration behind it that comes from people repeating actions. We're frustrated and we get angry. So I don't disagree with you at all. The anger is almost a secondary emotion. Yeah. But, but a powerful one that needs to get released. And I'm thinking about you, what you said about uh, the stick on the tree. I feel bad for the tree because I have a new appreciation (laughs) for trees because they ground us just saying, but it reminds me when I was cleaning my car a couple of months ago and I, I have a tree right next to the driveway and I would take the mats out and I want to clean them, you know, at least uh, get sand off of them, whatever. So I go up to the tree and I take the mat and I'm like, whew, and I whack the tree with the mat. It sounds like a baseball bat and it echoes through the whole neighborhood. But one day I realized after doing it, I felt so much better. And just like, psh, psh, 
cleaning, I'm cleaning the mat. So that's the well, goal. Think of the analogy of knocking the dirt, knocking that crud off of the mat. Yeah. And if you use that for your personal emotions, you're knocking that crap off and getting rid of it. It doesn't mean that you have to go and address the person who created the anger. You know, no. you can you can release that in a very healthy manner. And even the anger that we have within ourselves, like, why am I dealing with this now? I'm just so angry that I have to, why do I have to do this? Why? You're more anger, angry or frustrated with yourself because of maybe, now I'm going layers here, of <laughs> choices that you made that got you to that point, that on and on and on and on, which even makes it more impactful to get rid of it and release it. Yeah. Well, and even when you have, you know, something that was completely, you're in an accident, mm. God forbid, that was not your fault. Right. You know, there is a lot of anger. So where is the right, the uh, responsibility in that? You know, how do you take responsibility for somebody else hitting you? Okay, well, let's look at that. You know, could I have changed and done another route? Was there something that, you know, there's just so many different mm. things that you don't know. You don't know. Yeah. And when you think about, okay, well, I wasn't responsible for that. But you are responsible for your reaction. Yep. You get to choose how you want to respond to that situation. You know, you can't go back in time. You can't change it and take a different route. So don't get mad at yourself when you thought, oh, maybe I should take this route instead, but you didn't listen. So with the neuroemotional technique that that you experience today, what are some of the other principles and some of the other things there that uh, can help you release it? Um. So it's kind of hard to describe what we went through today. You, have you ever seen where you can balance yourself? And if there's something that you need, you kind of move forward. If it's not something that is good for you or you don't need, you got to stand there. You're, you're stiff. You're solid. It's similar to that. It's more of like a, a muscle reiki type. I don't know. I don't even know how to describe it. It was just really cool. <laughs> hmm. And she tapped into a lot of different areas in my life where I was holding a belief system or I was holding some anger or some resentment um, just by asking me questions. It, wow. was, it was amazing. Uh, I find this extremely interesting because of what you do. You've done a lot of this, a lot of different modalities and work, and then you come across this and it's like, wow, wow, where did that come from? Yeah. <laughs> this this worked and was very impactful. Well, and it's funny because even though I do work through these things, it doesn't mean that my life is perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, there's events that happen all the time and we still have to work through it. It's how we work through it. And I have been working on some different emotional pieces and I felt stuck. And this just happened to literally almost fall on my lap. And I'm like, oh, well, let me see what this is about. You know, maybe it's something that, maybe it's something I can refer my clients to. Like, I don't necessarily need this, but let's see what this is about. And it was very, very powerful. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll bring her into one of the podcasts and she can talk about it because it was just, it was just amazing how she could pinpoint different areas. Well, it sounds like there was some energy healing connected to this. There was definitely. Wow. Hmm. So I just had these intuitive questions that, you know, were spot on. Were they customized to you? They You're, were. Okay. They were. Hmm. So it, like I said, it's just kind of hard to describe. I'll, I'll have to bring her in one day. So yeah. I'm intrigued. Like I, I've, really uh, talk about it. I believe in I, energy. I thought, you know, other than stuffing my emotions every now and then, I thought I was pretty stable. <laughs> You know, but we all have so much that we're dealing with or we've dealt with. And let's be honest, the older you get, the more stuckness <laughs> <laughs> or stuck energy that you have. Um, yeah, it was. Uh, hmm. it's, uh, it's, so, it, it, it's funny when we really think about part of. So some of my relationships have been struggling and I couldn't quite figure out why. And it is a lot of this pent up emotion. There's a lot of these pieces that come out in communication. So when we understand and we learn that emotional resilience, it helps us to communicate more effectively. We can show a little more empathy. You know, there's so many benefits to really understanding where we are in our own emotional resilience. It just, it, it blew my mind. It really did. So, so when, when we talk about relationships can be strained, can that also come from somebody doing the work 
and having realizations of this is what I want. I, now it's clear to me. Mm-hmm. It's not happening in these relationships. And there's all different types of relationships. But then there can be frustration and some maybe anger yeah. because now you need to confront it to make it the way you feel it should be to serve you. And I don't mean that in a self-serving way. But, yeah. But then you need to get to that. You need to verbalize it. And now it's like the proverbial can of worms you're opening up. And here we go. <laughs> be prepared to deal with that. But it then is. if you don't deal with it, what do you have? More pent up emotion because it's something's not right. Yep. And that's one of the pieces where, you know, I've learned how to communicate effectively and with empathy. And so as I go through this, and there's a conversation that I'm going to have later today mm-hmm. uh, with a significant relationship, but I have one too, by the way, continue, <laughs> <I'm not kidding. laughs> yeah. you know, and understanding that number one, I don't need to hold their trauma. Their trauma is not my responsibility to hold on to. I am not responsible for fixing it. What I can do is stand beside them and say, okay, here are my expectations. They are no longer hidden. I understand what I need to move forward in this relationship. And how can we help you to meet those needs? Or is it time for us to go separate ways? You know, maybe we just go do our thing, Mm -hmm. you know, and It happens to be one of my good friends, but it's, I love her to pieces and that's fine. It just means that, okay, these expectations aren't being met. And now we can communicate those because I've seen it. I've seen why I've been so angry and frustrated. And I'm able to now have that conversation without the anger and the emotion and the feelings that are tied behind it. Yep. Yep. But in a journey you realize what you need and what what your expectation of the relationship is. And maybe, you know, let's say if it was 10 years ago, you might not have had that clarity. Things are feel a little off in a relationship, but now you have it. Yeah, exactly. And 10 years ago, I would have just probably shut the door on the relationship altogether. Mm, wow. Okay. You know, I'm angry. I'm frustrated. I'm just going to hold this grudge and I'm not going to talk to you. I'm over it. Have you ever said that? I'm over it. <laughs> yeah. More, more, <laughs> more now nice. than ever. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and so instead of just being over it now, because it's not tied to that emotion, I can say, okay, what is the purpose of my conversation? You know, what is the end result that I'm looking for? And I can communicate that without mm. the tears, without the blame, without the shame. Well, you said this, or you did that, or you failed here. You know, without that blame is so much easier to open up that conversation with empathy. It's interesting. This goes in my mind um, to something. I'm in, I'm in a men's group, I think I shared with you. And one of the things we do, it's called the CPR. It has nothing to do with resuscitation. <laughs> and anything that you do that you want a favorable outcome and better understanding, you used the word purpose a mom- moment ago, purpose of the relationship. The CPR is context, purpose, results. Yeah. And there's a there's a process. It's not too complicated. You can Google it. You got to get past the what you think, you know, what CPR stands for for most people. <laughs> but you'll find it. But it does give you that clarity as yeah. to when you're going to have a conversation or you, you're doing anything. What's the context of what you're doing? What's the purpose? And what are the results you expect to get from it? Um yeah. But it's interesting when you start filtering it down and and purpose of the relationship. It's kind of funny when you take a look at it. What? Why am I? Why am I connected to this person? What's what? What is the purpose of this relationship? I don't yeah. think we ask ourselves those questions enough. No, you know it's and it's it's really important. Even when you think about your spouse, okay, you're getting ready to jump into a conflict. Okay, what is the end result that I'm looking for? Mm-hmm. What is the purpose of this conversation? And that emotional resilience helps to bring that clarity. It, 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 it just, you're able to say, okay, you know what? Here's what happened. You can look at the facts. Okay. Here's what happened. This was the feeling that was elicited. Now here's the end result, but what do I want? Okay. What can we do to change this dynamic? Hmm. It's just, it, it's incredible the way we can really focus on, on that clarity, on having that purpose, you know, that end result. You're going into a conflict. What do I want to see happen? This reminds me of what I call the filter. 
And I guess it applies to the conversation that you're going to have, but definitely sending an email or a text. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's three things that you ask yourself before you do it. Is it kind? Is it necessary? Is it true? Not necessarily in that order, but is this really necessary to send this text or have this conversation? Am I being kind or am I just angry? And I just want to spew. Uh, and is it true? You know, what, what, what am I dealing with here? What, what, yeah, are, what, are, what the are the facts? facts? What are the facts? Right? Exactly. And when you're having that conversation, they're the I statements. It's the, okay, I felt this way. It's not you made me feel this way. I felt this way because my feelings, my reaction is my responsibility. And they're yours. So I felt this way. Yeah. And that's, again, building that emotional resiliency mm. and being able to take responsibility for your actions, for your response versus placing the blame. Okay. Yeah. They did something. Okay. Maybe it pissed you off, but why did that, what, what elicited that response? So what was yeah. it about their action that caused you to get mad? That's your responsibility. How are you going to react to that? How do you want to respond versus react? Well, I feel that this was a great topic today. <laughs> <laughs> this is the stuff that you don't normally find on podcasts that really pilot our lives. Emotion is everything. And how you look at it, whether you just fly off the handle or you got the resiliency, uh, is a game changer. Just a piece of what you offer. And I love the fact that you're always looking to learn more to help people more, i.e. the net modality that you uh, brought to light today. Uh, Lori, how do we find you? Uh, you can find me at visiblepotential.com. Feel free to send me an email at lori at visiblepotential.com. It's L-A-U-R-I-E, not L-O-R-I. <laughs> I get that one sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, you can find me on Facebook. You know, if you do find me on Facebook and you send me a message, please tell me that, hey, I heard you on this podcast or this is where I heard you or I found you. That way I know it's not scam. <laughs> Gotcha. We've had a few people just kind of reach out and say, hey, can we be friends? Mm -mm. Including Elon Musk today. It was great. Ah. <laughs> a friend. We were going to be friends. Um, friends. Or you N-D-S, I guess. So <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, AI, Messenger, sometimes AI please can't let spell. Me know. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, fantastic talking with you. Have a great weekend. We'll catch up uh, next time we get together. Maybe maybe at one point you can bring in the uh, the net lady if we, you know, we'll call her. I out. hope so, because it was it was pretty impressive. So yeah. thanks so much, Steve. Thank you. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Hey, Dad, how do airplanes fly? What's in this box? Can I touch this? Where does sand come from? Is this tree good for climbing? What happens if I mix these two things together? How are babies made? What does this thing do? Kids are curious about everything, including guns. Talking to them about gun safety in your home is a good first step, but you can do more. Always keep your guns locked, unloaded, and stored separately from ammunition. Storing your guns securely is the best way to prevent family fire, including unintentional shootings. For more information on safe gun storage and ways to keep your family safe, visit endfamilyfire.org. That's endfamilyfire.org. What do we keep in the attic? What's this thing called? Can I ride my bike backwards? Like I said, kids are curious. It's up to us to keep them safe. Brought to you by End Family Fire, Brady, and the Ad Council.